What's up guys? I'm Nick with Martech Engineering and today we're at the shop. I've had a bunch of people ask me for a shop tour video, so that's what we're doing today. First thing when you walk in is in our office. We got the dog beds where the assholes like to bark at people. Pretty basic in here. I just got my desk with the computer, files over there, whatnot. A couple photos on the wall. My wife was nice enough to paint the walls black for me as a birthday present. Hides all the dirt really nice, so it's a really nice touch. Moving on from the office is our shipping room. This is kind of our like part storage slash shipping room. You can see we got a lot of stuff. This is actually all the gears and lockers and some of the shock parts for my next Tacoma build. Over here we got bumper plates, shock reservoir mounts, all the stuff to build our motor mounts. On this rack over here, it's really just box storage. As we build up more inventory, we got a bit of room to keep it in. You know, we got a handful of motor mounts right now, some shock relocation kits, lots of boxes, customer shocks, things like that. And the last thing we got is our shipping bench in here. Nothing fancy here. I got this thing on Craigslist for like 50 bucks. Got some of our little clear wrap stuff there, stickers, bit of tape here, extra tape, packing material, and that's the shipping room. Moving out to the shop, this is the automotive fabrication side of the shop. We've got the lift over here, so this is where we do our builds, tear them down, weld them back together, things of that sort. We've got the air compressor here. we got our bolt bins over here. We don't use these as much as we used to. Uh, when we did a lot of general fabrication, you needed hardware of every different size. Now that we're doing kits and stuff like that, we know what we need, so we don't touch this a whole lot. Standard toolbox here, nothing fancy. i got my one drawer, nice stuff, and the rest is all Harbor Freight. Over here is our cabinet that we store just random knickknacks in. We got our funnels, we got our nut search stuff, we got all random boxes and stuff, stuff that we use for doing gear and install jobs. Nothing crazy going on in here. On the other side of the lift over here is where we keep all our jack stands. We got all our jack stands here, lots of adjustable pipe jacks. We got our torches over here, our little oil catch. And this is really just our jack stand collection back here. While I got you here and this thing's in the shop, we might as well rack this thing real quick and I can give you the tacos on the Rubicon damage report. Lucky for me, on tacos on the Rubicon, I actually didn't drive this thing that much. But the tie rod is really the biggest thing. I was waving at someone on the way out of the place at like 10 in the morning on Sunday and I ran right into a rock and put a nice bend in that. Well, I'm still dialed though, so we're not trying. Most of the damage I got on this thing this time was just from trying to hit like a couple bonus lines and be in places I probably shouldn't be. Put some nice dents in this thing. This is the original prototype pan that we designed and this thing's out of 3 16 Our skid plates that we do now are out of quarter. So this thing's holding up pretty well. I'm sure the quarters hold up great. Moving backwards. This has already been there, so we're not going to count that at all this trip. The other really bit of damage I got was just my drive line, and I wouldn't really consider this damage. I just kind of put a couple scratches on it for trying to hit bonus lines I shouldn't hit. Other than that, this truck's in great shape. Perfect. Ready for a road trip. Moving on, we got our Dirt Every Day poster from when those guys filmed an episode in our shop. They were starting to tear down when they went to leave, and I was like, hey, the poster's got to stay. It's got to stay. Next thing here is our Arclight Plasma table. This is the table that we designed and cut out all of our kits. Everything that we've ever designed out of the shop at one point was prototyped on this table. It's not nearly as clean a shape as it used to be, but it's been put to work and it's done me well. Moving into this funky little breezeway that the shop has. I hate this area, so I did my best to optimize it. We got our little press brake here. We got our shear here. We barely even use this thing for metal anymore. We really just shear boxes and stuff on that, which hey, it works. Got our uh, shelf up here with all our stuff on it. This is another shelf that we keep kind of random parts on. Like we've got our shock relocation kits that need to get welded, motor mounts, things like that. This is just kind of a random shelf that we put our overflow stuff on. Coming through that breezeway brings you into this side of the shop. This is our side of the shop where we do all our production work. Uh, we usually have a build or something going on around here as well, but this is where we kind of spend most of our time. Starting over here with our little clamp rack that I built a while ago. From there, we've got our filing cabinets. We keep like a bunch of random stuff in here, like here and locker install stuff, random hind joints, misalignments, spray paint, things like that. Then into our little list of toolbox, I keep a bunch of stuff in here. I've got a drawer full of random stuff. Jigs for doing limit strap tabs, tons of spacers, whatever thickness I got, you know, right angle blocks, little box full of random spacers so you can really dial in whatever you're working on. 
moving down, I got all my measuring devices in this one drawer. Drill bits in the next. Down here I've got my consumable drawer where I keep my flap discs, my resin pads, my cutoff wheels, all that kind of stuff. Down to the bottom drawer where I keep all my grinders wrapped up and out of the way. Moving forward, we got our TIG welder here. This is kind of just one of the benches where we do whatever is on the schedule that day. One welder here, another workbench here, forklift here, and our material rack. This will keep all the raw material for all the links, sliders that we do, bumpers, things like that. I kind of try and keep one of everything on board. That way, whatever you need, you have it because it takes a couple days to get this kind of stuff. Now we get into the more current stuff that we do. Let's go. Uh, we got Jake's truck in here. This thing is pretty close to being done. As you can see, the back bumper is halfway through being done. After that, we have to build the front bumper, get everything powder coated, stick it all back on, and really just buy our thing. Behind me, you can see all of our parts that we sell on our website. Starting at the top, we've got blank frame plates, gas tank skids, bumper blanks. Below that, we've got our links, frame plates, and kind of bulk up there. Below me here is all of our kit parts. So this is all our front kit part stuff. It shows up to us pre-cut and bent. From there we fit everything, we weld it all together, QC everything, stick it in boxes and ship it out to you. So this pallet's full of front kits, this pallet's full of rear kits. Down here we've got all our hind joints, all of our misalignment spacers, uniballs, things like that. Bands off for cutting links, two bender for bending upper links, doing bumpers and sliders, obviously all that stuff. And back here's our little weld station for parts. So we got our second welder here. I'm halfway through putting a rear kit together for someone at the moment. So we got some kit parts up here. Everything gets welded on here, fixtured on here. We got a set of trailing arms that are getting welded up tomorrow and going out before the week is over. So that's about it. So you've seen everything that's inside the shop. I'll take you outside and show you what we got going out here. Out here is kind of what I call our Tacoma graveyard. A lot of times when we do builds, we just cut everything off the front end, set it on a pallet, and it comes out here. Sometimes the customers take their parts home. Sometimes we get left with junk. But sometimes you end up with an e-locker axle or two, which is pretty cool. And it's always nice to have parts in stock. I'll have people hit me up for a random little piece, even bolts, things like that. So it's cool to have this stuff on hand to be able to help some people. After that, I got this mint condition Super Duty Dana 60. We actually bought this axle so that we could cut the seas off to do a fabricated housing for somebody in the future. The price was right. And uh, if you're like me and don't have very much self-control, you can't say no to junk that you don't need. Moving forward, we got our next batch of Super Duty axles. I like to buy these like three at a time. That way, I can, if the guys need stuff to do, I can have them prep axles, clean them up. And I often get a phone call of somebody saying, hey, I need a set of axles. Where do I get axles? So we got three sets here. Uh, the third front axle is hiding over there. And the last thing we got outside is this 06 single cap Tacoma. This is our next shop build once the first gen Tacoma is prototyped. This is our next rock crawler. So this thing's gonna be a full custom build. It'll have super duty axles. I won't tell you guys what the drivetrain setup is yet, but it's gonna be full cage, back half, front half, dubbed up front. The nose is gonna be dropped for visibility because if you've ever wheeled the second gen Tacoma, you know you can't see anything out of them in stock form. This thing's gonna go through the works. Don't know how long it's gonna take. Don't know when we're gonna start it. Don't know when we're gonna finish, but we have the truck, which is the most important part, right? Behind the truck, we got our pile of junk. Old wheels and tires, same thing as the parts. People say they're gonna come get them and they never do. I don't know, I'm a bit of a hoarder. What can I say? Behind me, you can see we got some catalytic converters, some drive lines, some core parts, just random junk I can't bring myself to get rid of little oil jug and that's all we got for outside so there you have it boys and girls that's our shop not the best not the worst i love this place i practically live here if you see anything that you think we can do better in the shop let us know in the comments i'm always trying to make this place better more efficient and just a better place to be so if you got some suggestions you see something that could be better let us know if you learned anything in this video and see something you might use in your own shop let me know if you hate my guts let me know. But now we're done with the shop tour, so it's time for you to get the f out. Come on. Let's go.
Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him.